Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 7 of Uzumaki Naruto, Birth of the New Demon King. If you guys enjoy this what if, and want to see part 8 of it, comment down below and let me know. The like goal for this video is 200 likes. So like this video, to let me know that you're interested in this series, and you want the next part. Check out my new videos of My Hero Academia what ifs in my second channel, and give us some love as well. Link is in the description. And go ahead, and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. Tsuchikin had never felt so much pain before in her life. It had all started after her failure in the preliminary portion of the Chunin exams, when she had faced off and lost to one Nara Shikamaru. She had known right then that she was done for as long as she stayed with Odagakure. Orochimaru did not take failure lightly, and punish those who did. She could clearly remember several instances where members of Odagakure's ninja force had failed or displeased their leader. Those that weren't outright killed were used in the Hibisanin's vile experiments. She, along with everyone else, greatly feared failing, knowing that was what awaited them. When Kin had failed, the first thing she had done was try to escape Kanoha before anyone was aware of her leaving. She had failed, and was caught by Wanyakushi Kabuto, who she learned was secretly working for Orochimaru as his top spy. She remembered how he had chided her, telling her how unbecoming it was, that she would try to escape her just punishment for failing Orochimaru-sama. He had captured her before she could even make an attempt at escaping. As the first stage of her punishment for her failure, Kin had been given to the Jonin of Odagakure as their plaything. Because Odo was not only a new village, but also one made largely from missing Nin, their Jonin population was small. All total there were only about 50 Jonin with around 40 of them being male. However, 40 Jonin using her in any way they wished was more than enough to cause Kin to suffer untold amounts of pain, agony, and humiliation. When they fists started playing with her she had tried to resist, putting up as much of a struggle as she could. But she was only a Ganon, and not even that strong of one. Her sensei had never taught her much beyond the basics of Genjutsu and Taijutsu, and her abilities in hand-to-hand -hand were subpar as it was not her specialty. Kin knew why he didn't teach her much now, it hadn't been difficult to figure out after her failure. She and her teammates had been nothing more than fodder, pawns to be used and disposed of when Orochimaru no longer needed them. The original purpose, Kabuto had told her, was to be killed by Chiha Sasuke to test how powerful his curse seal state was. Since she had survived and not passed the prelims, Orochimaru had decided she was no longer needed. She couldn't tell how many times the jonin of her village had raped her, using every hole she possessed to please themselves. During the first few hours she could remember how painful it was. Despite being a Kanoichi for a village like Odo she had managed to retain her virginity, which was a surprising feat, as most of the older ninja were all missing ninja, and had no scruples towards raping their fellow comrades, in order to please themselves. Many of the older Kanoichi had already been raped, and a few had even been killed attempting to escape. That was the main reason most of Odagakure was made up of males, and only the really strong females with a few exceptions, survived the trials by being a shinobi for the village. Because that and the brutality with which her virginity was taken, she had been in a constant state of pain for hours. That pain had not dulled since her punishment began. However, in order to deal with horrible acts being committed upon her, Kin's mind had forced itself to shut down. She was still semi-aware of her surroundings, could still see, smell, hear and taste. But her mind was not really registering any of what her senses were telling her. She was for all intents and purposes, a vegetable. Above her two Jonin were had just finished gang raping her, one having abused her vagina, and the other had used her mouth. As they pulled up their pants, one of them looked at the more or less comatose kin and sighed. Man is such a shame that we've got to rid of such a fine piece of meat. She's pretty much used up anyways, the other said. Look at her, she's practically a zombie now. They're no fun, if I can't listen to them scream. Besides, orders are orders and Orochimaru Sama needs her for his jutsu, that he's going to use. Yeah, yeah, I know, he's got this big bad jutsu that requires a living sacrifice, and is going to use it to help raise Kanoha to the ground. The first one said. I wish I knew what jutsu he was going to use, it sounds powerful. Not like you could use it even if you knew, the other jonin said with a roll of his eyes. Let's just get her in the coffin. By now the other two have to be in theirs. I'd say we lucked out when we were the ones ordered to put her in the coffin. At least we got one last good fuck out of her. Whatever, the other ninja said with a grunt. Kin heard and saw everything, even if her mind could not process what she was seeing or hearing. However, just as the man was about to lift her up and set her into the coffin, she was next to, something happened, which made her mind start. Blood splashed against her face and body from the man who had been about to grab her by the ankles. Said ninja was gaping at a hand that could be seen sticking through his chest, clutching his slowly beating heart. With a simple squeeze the heart was crushed, and the man's eyes dimmed before the hand pulled itself out, and the jonin fell to the ground. The last thing Kin saw before darkness claimed her, was a head of bright golden hair and two cerulean blue eyes. Birth of the new demon king. An hour earlier. You sure you don't want to come? 
asked Naruto as he looked at Kyubi who had just finished the ritual to open the portal to the human world. They had decided at the last moment that Naruto would go on ahead to the human world, while Kyubi would stay in Makai for a few more days, getting in contact with the Kitsune clan, so they could know of his existence and Kyubi's safety, and begin rebuilding their clan. She had told him that she would find him again in about a week's time, something that Naruto didn't really like as he had begun to cherish his time with the vixen. Especially the sex. You and I both know I can't come with you yet, Kyubi said patiently. Truth be told she didn't really want him to leave her either. Even though they had been running like Kitsune and Hida all day yesterday, she still didn't feel it was enough to truly satisfy her. Again, the sex was just that good. I don't know, Naruto said with a smirk. You came plenty of times with me yesterday. Haha <laughs> Kyubi laughed in a sarcastic manner. Your juvenile form of comedy is duly noted. Now, you need to leave or you may end up being late for the Chunin exams. Right, and the last thing I want to have to do is pull a Kakashi, Naruto said with a sigh. Somewhere outside of Kano has said one-eyed Cyclops sneezed loudly. He wiped his masked nose for a moment, hoping the person talking about him was Jiraiya talking about making him a character in the man's new book. He shrugged a moment later before getting back to teaching Sasuke. At least you have a better excuse than he does, Kyubi replied with a grin. Naruto chuckled. Yeah, I can just imagine how everyone would react when I said sorry I'm late, I spent so much time fucking my super hot mate that I forgot the time. Ha, that would go over real well. Most people probably wouldn't even believe me. Maybe if you still look like a chibi, Kyubi retorted. With your new looks I dare say any woman worth her weight would jump you in less than a second. Maybe, Naruto said. He was silent a moment later. Kyubi watched his eyes gain a thoughtful look, tilting her head in curiosity as he turned his head and gazed at her with an unreadable expression. Her curiosity turned into surprise, and she let out a small yelp as Naruto grabbed her by the hips and pulled her into a kiss. It wasn't the steamy, hot smoldering kisses they had shared the past few days. This one was soft, tender, and seemed to carry enough emotions that Kyubi felt her toes curl and her knees grow weak. When the kiss ended Naruto hugged her tightly. You know, I never in a million years thought I would say this, but I'm really going to miss you. Kyubi sighed as she nuzzled herself into the blonde's muscular torso, and felt the natural warmth the blonde's body exuded encompass her. Having spent somewhere close to a month with the demon shinobi, she could honestly claim that he was an even better man slash demon, than even Raisin Sama had been. He was kind, compassionate, understanding and caring to people he liked. That he counted her as one of those people, and didn't blame her for the death of his parents spoke very highly at how forgiving his nature was. But she knew he could be cold and ruthless as well, just as, if not more ruthless than even Raisin Sama had been before he had fallen in love. She hadn't seen much of it, but she did remember a few instances where he had been annoyed by the demons he had been killing. She clearly remembered one incident, where she and Naruto had gotten into some seriously heavy petting, and they would have likely had sex right there on the plains of Makai, were it not for several demons that had shown up in their midst. Naruto had been rather furious at the interruption, the fact that he had a pitch tent the size of Konoha, and no way to fix it as the moment had been ruined, had probably contributed to his rage. He had not just destroyed the demons that attacked, but had captured them and tortured them too near insanity. Or as insane as a mindless demon could get. If Naruto would do that to someone who annoyed him for interrupting his playtime with her. What would he do when someone seriously pissed him off? The thought sent pleasurable chills up Kyubi's spine. I'll miss you too, Naruto-sama Kyubi said. But it will only be for a week, then we'll be together again. She broke off the hug and took a few steps back, grinning at him. Perhaps when I get back we can have some good old-fashioned hello sex. Naruto shook his head in amusement. I didn't know there were different kinds of sex. Though, there's all kinds, Kyubi said as she began ticking off different types of sex off her fingers. There's hello sex, goodbye sex, makeup sex, angry sex, loving sex, kinky sex, and... Alright, alright, I get it, Naruto said, placing his hands up in a gesture of defeat. Now could you please stop mentioning sex, or else I'm going to fuck you right here. I don't know if we have enough time for goodbye sex, Naruto-sama Kyubi said in a voice that was too innocent to be real. The rather seductive look on her face didn't help fix that. I mean, you take a rather long time to get off, what with your demonic stamina and all. If we had sex now, you would miss the entire final portion of the Chunin exams. I'm guessing this might you to leave, Naruto mumbled with a light glare. You just be ready. Because when we see each other again, I'm going to put our stamina to the test. Yes, Naruto-sama Kyubi replied happily as Naruto turned around and walked towards the portal leading to the human world. As Naruto stepped through the portal, the odd sensation of waiting through jelly came to him. It wasn't as disoriented as it was last time since he expected it, and a blonde came out on the other side without a problem. Naruto looked around and noted with some satisfaction that he was in the same clearing he and Kyubi had been at when they first entered Makai. Kyubi was definitely precise when it came to creating portals to open where she wanted. He took a moment to make two Kage Bunshin, and ordered them to destroy the seals for the portal as Kyubi had instructed. 
Well, they were decently hidden by the illusion his vixen had cast. She didn't like leaving things to chance, and had only left the seals there, because she couldn't create a Kage bunch and Naruto didn't know the proper method of destroying the seals back then, and was more than likely to blow up the force. Now that he did know how the seals were made and the method for destroying them, he would get rid of these ones and make a portal in his apartment, that way they could enter Makai without anyone stumbling upon the scene by accident. Once done Naruto took the trees as he began his trek back to Konoha. It would only take an hour or two to get back, despite how far he was thanks to his newfound speed. As he was nearing Konoha however, Naruto saw something that he didn't remember seeing last time, and was very much out of place in the forest. A small man-made bunker that was dark brown in color and looked as if it had been created by a Doden Jutsu Gad, been built just a few meters from the clearing he had re-entered Makai from. Which in his mind just lent credence to Kyuubi's desire to get rid of the seals. There were several ninja walking around the perimeter, and all of them were wearing the Odogakure headband. What are Odo ninja doing in Kanoha territory, wondered Naruto as he used his skills and stealth to sneak closer to the base. The bunker was circular and rather small, around 30 feet in diameter all told. There were six guards surrounding the bunker, with one in the back, left and right, one walking around a little further out, and finally, two standing at the entrance. Naruto realized rather quickly that something was definitely wrong. While he had never paid much attention to Uruka's lectures, there were some bits and pieces of information that managed to penetrate his back then thick skull. One of those nuggets of knowledge was that it was illegal for any foreign shinobi presence to be in Konoha territory without permission from Konoha. And while Naruto knew that most ninja villages likely disregarded that rule in order to gain information on Konoha's defenses, they were also supposed to be stealthy about it. Creating a bunker in Konoha territory had all the stealth of Kyuubi if she were to waltz into Konoha in her demon form. Wanting to know what these Odo ninja were doing in Konoha territory, as well as feeling particularly bloodthirsty today, he decided to go and get his answers. The first ninja he came up to was the one walking around the perimeter. Naruto had waited until the ninja had been hidden from sight of the others behind some foliage, then placed his hands on the ninja's head and mouth, and snapped the man's neck. He quickly memorized the dead ninja features before hanging into him. He created a clone with orders to take the body somewhere far away and destroy, before he began the rounds that the Odo ninja had been using. During his rounds, Naruto would create several clones each time he was hidden from view, and ordered them to go underground and move until they were behind the ninja guarding the structure. Seemingly on an unspoken signal, the five clones rose up from the ground, and killed the five enemy ninja by either stabbing them in the heart, or throat with their now clawed hands, snapping their neck as the original had done, and one particularly creative clone had ripped the man's head off with the Odo ninja's spinal cord being taken with it. Naruto had actually taken a moment, to note that clone's technique, and decided the way he had killed his enemy had been awesome, and Naruto would need to try it as well. As the clones dispelled, Naruto went up to the door, and pressed his ear against it to see, if anyone was in there. What he got, was a surprisingly informative conversation. Man it's such a shame that we've got to rid of such a fine piece of meat. She's pretty much used up anyways. Look at her, she's practically a zombie now. They're no fun if I can't listen to them scream. Besides, orders are orders and Orochimaru Sama needs her for his jutsu that he's going to use. Yeah, yeah, I know, he's got this big bad jutsu that requires a living sacrifice, and is going to use it to help raise Kanoha to the ground. I wish I knew what jutsu he was going to use, it sounds powerful. Not like you could use it even if you knew. Let's just get her in the coffin. By now the other two have to be in theirs. I'd say we lucked out when we were the ones ordered to put her in the coffin. At least we got one last good fuck out of her. Whatever. From the sounds of what he had heard, the two in the room had been raping someone who was going to be used as a sacrifice for some jutsu or chimuru was going to do. And said jutsu was also supposed to help him destroy Kanoha. That mere fact alone was more than enough to help Naruto make a decision on what to do, hearing that the two men had been raping whoever was in there with him, was just the icing on their proverbial shit cake. Naruto blew the door two pieces with a well-laced, yaki and hands punched. Before either of the two jonin inside knew what was going on, one of them was knocked out with a kick to the head. And another was killed when Naruto rammed a hand through his back, and ripped his heart out through his chest, then crushed the slowly beating organ. Naruto pulled his hand out of the now dead shinobi, and turned to the other occupant in the room. He recognized her as one of the Odo competitors for the Chunin exams, though she looked like she had seen better days. Aside from the lifeless stare, Kin's entire body was covered in cuts and bruises. What party could see that wasn't covered in semen at least? The blonde's fists clenched a bit at seeing the state of the girl. Weren't these men her comrades? People who were supposed to protect her. While it was true there was no real honor among ninja, there were certain codes that most ninja abide by. Protecting and helping your comrades was one of them. Or so Naruto assumed. The thought that someone would do something like rape a member of their own village was enough to make him feel that the people he just killed got off far too lightly. However, he reigned in his desire to pull the Odo ninja back from the dead, using the Jido outer path, just so he could torture them some more. 
and said he went over to Kin and used the only water jutsu he knew, one that Kyubi had taught to him as a reward for getting so far in her training, to wash off the semen. He had to power it down greatly since the jutsu, which was more of a water manipulation as it didn't require hand signs, was designed to kill opponents by drilling them with a powerful drill made of water. For this he blunted the edge, and used less than one eighth the amount of chakra he normally would. When he had finished cleaning her off he unsealed one of his extra cloaks, a nondescript travel cloak in a light beige color. He quickly wrapped the girl in it and created a clone. Get her to the nearest hospital you can. Before he had run afoul of this place, he had passed a village, and that meant they likely had a hospital. When you get her there I want you to stay with her until I return. If she wakes up before then let her know what is going on. Got it. He knew that his clone already knew what it wanted, but for some reason felt about giving it an order. Yes, boss, the Kage Bunshin replied, before scooping Kin into his arms and taking off. Naruto watched the clone leave before going over to the unconscious Jonin. After tying him up with some rope Naruto found lying around, the blonde demon shinobi woke him up with a kick. The man's eyes snapped open with a start, and he let out a yelp as Naruto kicked him in the ribs a second time. The man looked around for a moment before they found Naruto, and then he felt like soiling himself. The blonde had released some of his yaoki, enough to change his basic form into something fierce. His hands were now clawed, and his fangs had lengthened. There was a dark red and black aura surrounding Naruto as his yaoki came out of him in waves. But the worst thing, the very worst thing were the eyes. A silver ripple-like pattern over the eyes, with a cerulean blue pupil and sclera. Before anything else could happen, Naruto placed his hand on the shinobi's head, making the man freeze on contact, unable to move, and scarcely able to breathe. Now, Naruto said in a voice that actually did make the man soil himself. You will tell me everything you know about Orochimaru and his plan to destroy Kanoha. Birth of the New Demon King. Tsukuchi Akira was a well-respected jonin in Orochimaru's ninja forces. He had been a respectable B-rank missing nin before joining Odagakure, and while he was not as high up as some, he was higher than most. His power and ability had been recognized by Orochimaru, after he had successfully managed to accomplish every mission the man had given to him. That was why he had been one of the ninjas selected to help lead the forces that were hidden amongst the civilians at the Chunin Exam Stadium. It was his job to help lead Odagakure's ninja in an attack on the Kanoha Jonin and Chunin, who were able to break out of the Genjutsu Kabuto wood cast. Only Kira would never be able to accomplish his goal. The man was intercepted on his way to the stadium, and had all of the information forcibly pried from his mind. After that his soul was ripped from his body before being sent straight to hell. His body would be burned, and Akage Bunshin would take his place. No one would ever know what happened to Sakuchi Akira but one person. Birth of the New Demon King. It was a bright day in the Kanohigakure no Sato. The sun's rays were falling upon the village, creating bright streams of light through the many trees that the village was named after. Children could be seen playing within the streets, and teenagers and adults of all ages and genders were shopping for goods, while birds could be heard singing from above them. The sounds of cheering people could be heard all over the Hidden Leaf Village as shinobi, civilian, nobles, and commoners alike had all gathered to witness the Chunin exam finals. As he looked over the village from his seat in the Kage booth, Saratobi Hizarin couldn't help but be pleased with the turnout. In one section of the stand sat the members of the newly dubbed Kanoha 12, which consisted of the members of the newly famed Rookie 9, along with the members of Team Guy who hadn't made it to the finals. The name was given to them because of all of the Genin of Kanoha, who had been placed in the Chunin exams, all 27 teams, it was the four rookie teams that passed the second stage, and made it to the preliminary rounds. Sitting with them were the Jonin senseis of the teams, minus one, each of them looking down at the students who had made it past the prelims in pride. On the arena floor eight figures could be seen standing in a line facing the Kage booth. Seven of those figures were the Genin who were about to compete in their matches, Aburo Meishino, Hyuga Neji, Nara Shikamaru, Ichiha Sasuke, Sabaku no Gaara, Sabaku no Tamari and Sabaku no Konkuro. With the last member being the Jonin proctoring this match. The proctor, Shiranui Genma, had dark brown hair reaching to his neck, and brown eyes. He was wearing his forehead protector like a bandana, and the standard jonin outfit of dark blue pants, and a long sleeve blue shirt with his jonin flak jacket over it. Sir Toby frowned as he saw that they were missing three ninja, Kanuta Dosu, Ichiha Sasuke and Uzumaki Naruto. He knew that Dosu was dead, his corpse having been found by his anbu just last night, and Ichiha Sasuke was with Kakashi, so it was a given that he would either make it at the last minute or turn up late. However, that Naruto was not standing down there was worrying. He knew the blonde would never miss a chance like this. Sir Toby couldn't help, but wonder if something had happened to him. Sir there is still no sign of Ichiha Sasuke, but we have a few squads searching for him. Said a jonin, before he leaned over to whisper into his Kage's ear. Sir, do you think it's possible Orochimaru may have already gotten to the boy? Questioned the man. The San Darime didn't let his subordinate know what he was thinking, with several decades of ninja experience he had learned the art of keeping his face emotionless. However, the thought that Orochimaru may already have gotten his hands on Sasuke was worrying. 
the boy had been with Kakashi, and while Saratobi planned on having words with how the man had taken up favoritism with his squad, the sharing and toting Jonin was still one of his best shinobi. Before he could reply to the Jonin's words however, he caught sight of a pair of white and blue robes out of the corner of his eye. Upon seeing them he turned to greet the arriving Kazukage. Kazukage Dono, you must be tired from the long journey, he greeted cordially. Not at all, the man replied in his calm manner as he sat down. Though it's a good thing the exams were held here this time. While you are still young the trip may have been too much for you Hukage-sama. Perhaps it's time you choose a fifth. Sirtobi gave a hearty laugh, and waved the man's comments off. Please don't treat me like an old man. The fire in me still burns as strongly as it did 20 years ago. I've still got a few more years left before needing to find a successor. It seems we have two missing. Said the Kazukage upon taking his seat, eyes roving over to the field. Yes, it seems as if young Sasuke and Naruto have not to shown up. As things stand I may have to disqualify them. However they both have until the exams start to present themselves so we will wait and see, said Saratobi. As if summoned by his words a very familiar voice spoke up behind him. You know, it's impolite to speak about someone who's right here. Everyone, from the Jonin guards to the two Kages jumped and spun around in surprise. Their standing before them was none other than Naruto, and he had changed his look. It was only slightly different from the battle outfit he had been wearing in Makai. He had discarded his vest, making his extremely defined and muscular torso visible for all to see. But he still had his Hayori, shin and forearm guards, boots, skin-tight black pants, and fingerless gloves. He had also added a pair of sleek-looking sunglasses to his attire. This was so he didn't have to continuously use chakra to keep up the illusion over his eyes to hide his Rinnegan. He was also wearing the katana and wakizashi that had been on the mantle in his and Kyuubi's mansion. They were both sheathed on the left side of his waist, with only the handles being seen as they were hidden within his Hayori. The Jonin guards all pulled out their kunai and took up a stance around the two Kages, mainly because no one except a few ninja knew of the changes Naruto had gone through, and so didn't recognize him. Sir Toby, however, did, even if he was surprised by the blonde's new growth spurt, and waved his guards down. The Jonin looked unsure, but did as told, and a few moments later the Kazukage did the same. Naruto-kun, my boy, you surprise me, Sir Toby said with a smile. He eyed the blonde's new to him look. I like the new outfit. Meanwhile the Kazukage was staring at Naruto with a frown hidden behind his mask. Thanks, Oji-san. Naruto said with a grin. I think it's pretty kick-ass too. Now not that I'm not pleased to see you, but shouldn't you be down in the arena? Naruto had a rather large grin on his face as he spoke. Yeah, but I just wanted to see you first, and to tell you to put all your money on me since I plan on winning this thing. Oh? Sir Toby raised an eyebrow. Yep, so put some money on me to win the tournament, I guarantee you won't go wrong. Naruto walked over to and passed the aging Hokage, his hand just barely ruffling the man's Kage robes. He went over to the edge, where people soon began to notice him and point. Turning, he gave the old man one last grin. I would ask you to wish me luck, but I won't need it to win this. With those words, Naruto spun around and jumped off the Kage booth. Saratobi shook his head and chuckled at Naruto's showboating, though he had a feeling the boy may actually be able to do just what he said and win the tournament. His instincts were screaming at him that the young blonde had gotten much stronger, and considering the fact that he looked even older and more powerful than he had a month ago, it was a safe assumption to make. His left hand went into his robes and pulled out the small note the blonde had stuck in them when he passed. He held it up to his eyes and read. The man sitting next to you is not the Kazukage, but Orochimaru in disguise. He plans on using the third stage of the Chunin exams to launch an invasion with the aid of Suna. The sole purpose of it being the destruction of Kanoha. He will use the match between Ichiha Sasuke and Sabaku no Gar as the starting point of his invasion, where he will have his right-hand man, Yukushi Kabuto, cast a Kenjutsu over the entire stadium. There are over 50 Odo and Suna ninja hidden amongst the arena population, and they have several thousand men outside of the village walls. Orochimaru also plans on using a summoning circle, which is hidden in Kanoha's forest to summon one of his snakes. Gara will be the hammer that he uses to crush Kanoha, he is a Jinchuriki for the Ichibi no Shukaku, and can apparently go full demon mode. My suggestion is to pretend nothing is wrong. When Ichiha Sasuke is late, and considering who his sensei is we both know he will be, disqualify him. That will disrupt their plans long enough for you to somehow get a message to your forces to let them know what is going on and prepare. Other than that, and possibly evacuating the civilians to the shelters hidden in the Hokage faces, don't do anything. Also, the true Kazukage is dead, killed by Orochimaru. I will find a way to inform Suna so they ally with us instead. And don't worry about Gar, I'll handle him. Oh? Put some money on me to win this thing. It was a credit to the skill and experience Suratobi had as a ninja and Kage, that his face hadn't so much as twitched while reading Naruto's message, though on the inside his mind was going a hundred miles a minute. The first thing he wondered was whether or not these words were true. And if so, how would he prove them? The second thing he was curious about was if it was true. 
Then how had Naruto found out about it? After thinking about the letter, Saratobi realized there was too much coincidences for this not to be true. Orochimaru had shown himself during the preliminaries. Saratobi knew his former student would never do such a thing without a good reason, and just showing up to Mark Uchiha Sasuke would not be a good enough reason for him. No, the destruction of Kanoha made much more sense. And even if that wasn't true, it never hurt to be prepared. He used a minor application of fire chakra to burn the message, an act which caught the attention of the Kazukage. What was that letter, Hokage-sama? Oh, just Naruto-kun telling me how much I should put on him to win, Sirutobi said lightly. He seems rather confident, the Kazukage replied. However, I doubt he could defeat Gar, or even your own Ichiha Sasuke in battle. Hmm, Sirutobu said, aiming the man out of the corner of his eyes. Perhaps, but Naruto-kun has always been full of surprises. Now then, I believe it is time for me to begin the Chunin exams. Birth of the New Demon King. Naruto as he jumped off the Kage booth, falling towards the ground face down. At the last second he flipped himself around, landing in a crouch as the earth under him buckled and cracked. He stood up and walked over to the other Genin with a grin. Most of the Genin were looking at him with a combination of shock and surprise. Well, Konkuro was looking at him in shock and surprise. Chino and Gaara were looking at him with their normal emotionless expressions, though Gaius was tinged with a mixture of bloodlust and apprehension, an odd combination, if there ever was one, and Shino's face was so hidden it was hard to even see his face. Shikamaru looked at him like he was the most troublesome thing in the world, and Naruto knew that was probably exactly what he was thinking too. Neji just had a sneer on his face. The thing that surprised him, and was in truth not so much of a surprise, were the looks he was receiving from the two females. Ino was currently staring at his chest, her face had a tinge of pink to it, and her mouth was parted. She was also drooling. Naruto had trouble keeping the shiver that threatened to ruin his new badass persona he was trying to create. He knew that Ino was a fangirl, all throughout the academy she had been just as bad as Sakura in her stalking fangirlish tendencies when it came to Naruto's male teammate. The last thing he wanted was for her to become his fangirl. She just didn't have the figure he was looking for in a woman. Tamari was also looking at him, though she was much more discreet than the other blonde. However, Naruto could still see the light pink hue that ran across her cheeks. It was clear that she took her training more seriously and cared about her professional image, but was not above admiring someone she thought was attractive. Naruto could appreciate her desire to be a Kanoichi first and a woman second, at least when it mattered. As Naruto walked towards the group, he decided that since Tamari was looking at him, turnabout was fair play. She hadn't changed her outfit since he had last seen her. Tamari's blonde hair was still gathered into four ponytails. Her outfit still consisted of a single light purple colored off-the-shoulders garment that extended to halfway down her thighs, with a scarlet sash tied around her waist. In addition to incorporating fishnet worn over her shoulders and legs, specifically on her right calf and her left thigh, she also wore her headband around her neck. It was also hard not to notice the young teenage girl's budding assets, which were visible beneath her clothes. She was a few years older than him, and he could see that she was growing rather well. Her chest was not large, likely round a mid C cup, but considering she was still young and had yet to get out of puberty she was rather impressive. Her body was lithe and toned, letting him know that she took care to keep herself in shape. With a narrow waist that tapered off into flared hips and strong looking, toned thighs. She was a nice combination of strength and feminine beauty. She didn't have Kyuubi's perfection, nor the red hat's near overpowering sexuality, which oftentimes drove Naruto insane in a good way. But there was something to be said about Tamari's more simple beauty. It seemed she noticed him admiring her, because she took a moment to look away from his body and meet his eyes. He smirked, letting her know that he knew she was looking at him, causing her to turn away. The action just caused his smirk to whiten. I apologize if I'm a little late, Naruto said to Genma as he reached speaking distance. I was outside of Kanoha and it took longer than I expected to get back. You're not late, Genma said. Actually, you're right on time. Get in line so we can start this thing. Right, Naruto chuckled. He made it to the line, finding a spot between Shikamaru and Shino. He looked at the two on either side and asked, you two ready for this? Yes, I prepared myself beforehand and feel confident of my chances in getting promoted to Chunin, Shino replied with his standard monotone voice. Naruto was impressed, that was the most he had ever heard the boys say in a single sentence. Usually Shino preferred giving one word answers. This whole thing is too troublesome for me to even think about preparing for, Shikamaru said with a groan. It was clear to everyone that he would rather be watching clouds than standing there waiting to fight for a chance at getting a promotion, where if he did he would have even less time to watch clouds. Hey, think of it this way, Naruto started. At least it will keep your mother off your back for a little while longer. That's true, Shikamaru said. Damn, troublesome woman. Naruto snickered at his fellow Kanoha Genin's muttered last words. He thought about saying something about how the lazy Nara's mom wouldn't appreciate her son saying bad things about her, but before he could open his mouth, Saratobi began his opening speech. Thank you for coming. 
I would like to welcome you all to Kanoha's Shunin selection exams. We will now begin the main tournament between the nine participants who made it through the preliminaries. Alright you guys, take a look. This is the lineup for the main matches. Shiranui Genma held up a sheet of paper with the matches shown on it. As you can see there will be five matches for the first round, with the winner of match four fighting Yamanaki no. Hey wait! exclaimed Ino in a rather loud voice. Naruto winced, while her voice wasn't as loud and nail on chalkboard sounding as Sakura's, she was still very loud. What happened to the guy I was supposed to fight? He was disqualified, said Genma. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the hesitation when he said disqualified. That Toh Mendosu was likely dead. Could Orochimaru have killed him for that jutsu kin was going to be used in? Naruto wondered, before shaking his head. No, that would have alerted the Hokage, that something was up, and it doesn't seem like his style, to be so careless when planning an invasion. Now then, the same rules from the preliminaries apply here. This basically means there are none. Matches will be fought one on one until someone dies, is knocked unconscious, or admits defeat. However, if at any time I deem that a fight is over I'll step in and end the match, is that understood? Bono no spoke Gemma nodded, satisfied. Good, now will Uzumaki Naruto and Hyuga Neji please step forward. All other contestants go to the fighter's booth. Birth of the New Demon King. Well, check it out, said a ninja with long, spiky black hair and dark eyes. Hagin Katetsu was a Chunin level shinobi and one of the judges for the Chunin exams. He was wearing a bandage over his nose and had a light colored marking on his chin. His outfit consisted of the standard attire of a Kanoha shinobi complete with forehead protector and flak jacket. I didn't get to see the prelims, but it seems the rumors were true. That kid is ripped. I wonder if that's why he always wore those obnoxious jumpsuits. Whatever, built or not there's no way he can win against the Hyuga kid, said his partner, another Chunin with brown hair and dark eyes. Kamazuki Izumo had his hair combed down on the way so that it was covering his right eye. He was wearing his forehead protector like a bandana, along with the standard Kanoha Shinobi outfit, which went all the way up to his chin and a flak jacket. I mean, he was the dead last in his class, and Hyuga Neji was last year's rookie of the year. Yeah, it's too bad. I kind of like the kid. Just a little below the two Chunin were Hinata and Kiba, both of whom had heard the Chunin examiner's words. Hey, don't listen to them, Hinata-chan, said Kiba in a reassuring tone. There's no way Naruto could lose. I mean, he kicked my ass like I was a mere academy student. His defeat at the hands of the blonde demon shinobi had shown Kiba that he had been slacking off all this time. During the one month period before the preliminaries, Kiba had taken to training with his mother, in Yuzuka Tsum, the matriarch of his clan, and his sister, Hana, in their clan techniques. You're right, Kibakun, Hinata stammered. I, I need to think positively. Naruto-kun will win. She still wasn't sure about Naruto anymore. That power he had used scared her worse than Gar. But, he had defended her from Neji, so the least she could do was support him. There you go. Now let's watch Naruto kick your cousin's ass. Birth of the New Demon King. Man, who would have thought Naruto of all people, would be in the final stages of the Chunin exams. Asuma said as he took a slow drag of his cigarette, blowing out a small ring of smoke a few seconds later. The surprises never cease. Kurenai wrinkled her nose as the smoke wafted over to her. Waving her hands in front of her face to rid herself of the acrid smoke, she said, it's definitely a surprising development. When you count for how much she changed in such a short time, it makes you wonder, what happened in that forest? Ino said Naruto went from being scrawny and loud idiot to a hunky man she could just eat, Asuma said, making quotations marks when he spoke. It may have something to do with Orochimaru. We all know he got the Chiha kid with his mark, he might have done something to Naruto as well. Maybe. For some reason Kurenai didn't think Orochimaru had actually done something to Naruto. At least, he wasn't the one responsible for his changes. No, there was something else going on with the blonde ninja, and she couldn't deny her curiosity about the blonde's new changes. Thankfully Anko seemed to have taken the same interest in the kid as she had, which meant she wouldn't need to do any snooping as Anko would do it all for her. A good thing too, it would be unsightly for a Jonin sensei to be gathering intelligence about someone else's student. Even the sensei of said student hadn't actually taught him anything. It was at this moment that Haruno Sakura decided to make her presence known to the two Jonin. Who cares about Naruto Baka, he's just an idiot and a monster. Asuma and Kurenai both looked at the girl in disgust. How could say such a thing about your own teammate? Questioned Kurenai as she glared at pink haired girl. Because it's true, Sakura stated in a tone that said the reason for her words were all too obvious. Kasan always told me he was a monster in disguise, and the Chunin exams proved it. Only a monster could do what he did. The scowl on Kurenai's face was even worse, than her I found a pervert, and I'm going to cast the worst genjutsu I can think of on him face. That she wasn't leaking killing intent like a sieve, was a testament to the impressive amount of control she had over her emotions, when all she wanted to do was beat the stupid pink cat to a pulp. It was girls like Sakura that gave all Kanoichi a bad name. It was fortunate for Kurenai that someone decided to put the girl in her place before she did. 
The kunai sailed towards the pinket from behind, slicing straight through her cheek, and making the girl let out a loud yelp of both surprise and pain. Before she could bring her hand to her now bleeding skin, Anko appeared behind her with another kunai resting against the girl's throat. You know it's cunt sucking little bitches like you that give us true kunoichi a bad name, said the perplet as she traced the edge of her kunai along the younger girl's throat, drawing blood. Sakura began shivering as Anko began pouring killing intent at the girl. I bet if Ichiha had accomplished even half of what that gaki did in the prelims, you'd be cooming all over the place and proclaiming his greatness. You girl are a pathetic waste of flesh and space, and if all you're going to do is insult someone who is better than you, then I suggest you leave. As added incentive, Anko blasted Sakura with nearly half of her killing intent. The pinket let out a loud shrink, however, rather than run off like Anko had wanted, the girl fell to the floor and curled up in a fetal position. Anko's sweat dropped. Dear Kami, are you seriously that pathetic? I think that's enough for now Anko-chan, Kurunai said, catching her best friend's attention. You may want to rein in your killing intent, you're scaring some of the civilians. Oh, hi Ni-chan. Anko said with a bright smile completely ignoring her friend's statement. I almost didn't see you there, I was so busy having fun playing with the bitch over here. I can see that. Now why don't you sit down and rein in your killing intent? The exams are about to start. Right, right, Anko sat down on Kurunai's right. Man I can't wait for this thing to get started. I've got a lot of money on the gaki to win it all. Not betting on the Hyuga, kid or the Ichiha, asked Asuna. Anko snorted. Are you shitting me? Bet on that stuck up, stick in the ass Hyuga. Or place money on the prissy little Ichiha bitch, who I might add is being trained by I'm never on time Kakashi. No thanks. Besides, there's just something about the blonde gaki that makes me want to bet on him. And with the odds I got, if he wins this, then I am going to be very rich. Kuku kuku. Asuma and Kurunai both sweat dropped as Anko began chuckling in a very evil manner, and mumbling about what she would do with her winnings, and how she was going to thank the hunky blonde Gaki when he won. Some of what was said disturbed Kurunai. Asuma just thought it sounded kinky and felt a moment of jealousy towards Naruto. Birth of the New Demon King. As Genma got close he spoke, the first matchup of the Chunin exams finals, Uzumaki Naruto vs Hyuga Neji, are you ready? Neji smirked as he looked at the blonde, who had a rather nonchalant expression on his face. I suggest you give up. You were already fated to lose this match. Naruto picked at his ear as if he hadn't heard the Hyuga prodigy. Though he answered a second later. Aha. Uh -huh. How about I don't, and instead kick your ass from here to Sunday. Genma took these statements to mean they were itching to get started. Hajim. He quickly leapt out of the way as the crowd roared while the matches started. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video. Like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.